Does yesterday's speech make a break from the past, or is it just a hash of words that is, has been repeated? Uh, it, it doesn't appear to me that the Prime Minister came here intending to break new ground. So those who feel that more needs to be done will probably feel the same way after a state visit you know, here to Washington. There's no question that uh, recent actions and recent comments have raised tensions, particularly you know, in the region with China, with South Korea. So there's no question that the Prime Minister needs to do more. You know, that said, I, I was encouraged by, you know, he, he reiterated when speaking with President Obama what he had said at the United Nations last fall in terms of given Japan's role and given the tragedy of comfort women during World War II, that Japan is going to take that lesson and become a global leader in combating sexual violence and human trafficking. So I think that's the kind of thing that Japan needs to continue to do is to internalize the lessons of the past and apply them to the, to the present, you know, to ease tension and, and, and further challenge, you know, and, and, and address challenges that we all face around the mm. world. That's what we're talking, exactly what we're talking about, kind of apology. He used the words of remorse and repentance. So from your point of view, Mr. Su, um, is it really an apology or a fake apology or not apology at all? No, no, I don't think so. It's not the same as the apologies. As we know that, you know, apology, that's real you know, in the feelings of the so serious sorry for the is, is, you know, previous uh, uh, cities in a war time. But this time, he just said that re remorse or something like the repentance or something like that. It's not real, you know, to, to feel the, you know, apologize to the victims in the past time. Mm -hmm. But he just said that, well, we just feel, you know, should not do so in this way, you know, in history. So I don't think it's the real apology. So he is expressing a, a sort of a regretness, a regretfulness towards some facts that already happened, but not taking responsibility of it. Yes, I, I would like to yeah. ask your response, Mr. Watanabe, of Abe's non-apologizing stance. Well, uh, apologize or not apologize, uh, uh, that's, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's an appropriate way to uh, put the question. Uh, I think, for instance, uh, Mr. Abe already showed his de uh, determined uh, position that he will uphold the views expressed by the previous uh, prime ministers uh, in this regard, uh, so in the regard of the uh, wartime atrocities committed by Japan, particularly to the people of uh, neighboring Asian nations. So that includes uh, the statement made by uh, uh, Pr uh, Prime Minister uh, Murayama uh, back in 1995, and uh, he used uh, this uh, expression of uh, deep remorse. Mm. And also, uh, at the same time, he said that uh, uh, you know, our uh, Japanese actions brought suffering to the people in Asian countries and we should not avert our eyes from that. So that is very clear uh, that he shared apologies made by previous uh, Japanese prime ministers and he went on what we could do together with the United States for the betterment uh, of the uh, uh, of the life uh, here and there. I mean, the, in the Pacific, but also in the United States and elsewhere. So uh, I think the, we have to look at a uh, more positive side mm. uh, of this uh, uh, speech uh, addressed to the Congress. Mm. We often say that without expectations, there will be no disappointment. Let's take a look at some media uh, comments on the Abe speech uh, in front of the Joint Houses of Congress. The New York Times in an editorial last week said, by now history should have been settled and that it is not settled is largely the fault of Mr. Abe and his right-wing political allies who keep questioning history. And that is stoking regional tensions. And Abe yesterday at the U.S. Congress um, offered uh, repentance and condolences, but not apologies. So do you think it's causing more harm than good, Mr. Su? Well, I think, you know, even if he said that the, this, uh, in the deep uh, uh, remorse regarding his previous uh, issues in a war time, and he said that he upholds the previous opinions of his previous you know, prime ministers. But why he could say, you know, repeat the same word, like the heartily apologize, or say some kind of regrets about the, his previous uh, issues regarding like the uh, comfortable woman, something mm -hmm. like that, because the previous prime minister already said the same word in this world. But why this Abe did not refuse, even he refused to, to, to do so in this way. Mm. So I think that's, 
regarding his original you know, right-wing thought or his standpoints, he refused to do so in this way. So that means he's different with the previous prime ministers. Mr. Crowley, I would like I would like you to weigh in on this. Uh, do you think it's time for Abe to change an attitude into a non-combat kind of stance? Well, I mean, this this exists in a larger political context. I think I think um, you know the the to the extent that the prime minister's comments and actions in recent months have increased tensions in the region. This is counterproductive for China's or for Japan's long-term interest, um, and it, it issues that. You know, he needs to address uh, with China, with South Korea, other countries as part of a you know, respectful conversation. I think it's important for all countries you know, to try to find ways to you know, ease, the, ease the temperature, lower the temperature around these issues. But this is very, very difficult for all countries. You know, in a, d a different context, there's tensions between, for example, you know, Turkey and Armenia. Mm. You know, both countries are still wrestling with the historical record, you know, not of World War II, but of World War I. And, and you, we, you know, all sides have to find a way to have a, a respectful dialogue, you know, not to increase tensions, but to increase understanding and use, the vis you know, use this conversation to some extent like the prime minister did in the context of the United States. Yeah, we see these issues in slightly different ways than probably the region does, but use a reflection of the past to, you know, to increase bonds, not increase tensions. Interesting to speak of dialogue. Um, the U.S. has expressed that it will not take sides and will not mediate uh, through countries regarding history <coughs> issues, and China has already uh, stressed that U.S. has no position in, in this issue. So, Mr. Su, what's your take on this? Well, uh, in the past times, the uh, United States always say that he did not take the positions on the side of, you know, uh, Japan's or, the, you know, regarding the territory disputes uh, with China. But it seemed as this time, you know, just before the Abe's speech in, as you know, Congress, mm -hmm. he also, uh, I mean, United States and uh, Japanese defense ministers had the, you know, agreement regarding the, uh, you know, uh, the something like so we call the guideline of the uh, defense cooperation, which is the very clear stance that from Japan American side that we would like to apply these treaties or its you know, defense alliance mm. uh, the com commitment regarding their you know the mm -hmm. issue. So that means already take some kind of the side with Japan. So it's not very really good for Japan, for China. Yes. Now U.S. really wants uh, Japan to to be in its collective defense agreements. That means Japan can uh, t uh, can strike back at the enemy which attacks the U.S. So, Mr. Watanabe, do you think that will exacerbate the tension already existing in Northeast Asia? Well, uh, let's look at the uh, past history of Japan-U.S. Uh, uh, defense pact. Uh, it started early on in the 1960s, and uh, Japan continuously uh, um, determined not to apply this uh, uh, collective uh, set of defense, uh, despite the fact that we have the uh, close um, alliance with the United States. So that was a kind of one-sided uh, uh, international treaty that the U.S. has more burden on itself, uh, whereas Japan has less burden on it. So. This time, uh, Japan tried to uh, improve the situation, and since we have this uh, uh, military alliance with the United States, it is obvious that uh, we have to also have uh, appropriate share of responsibility of uh, defending our ally uh, that is the United States. So you see, this is not to escalate uh, military buildup on either side, but just to uh, normalize uh, the alliance uh, that is uh, really the core uh, of this um, uh, prosperity and stability of the uh, Asia and Pacific. 